The Indian painter Bhupan Kakkar, who died some years ago, was a dear friend long before he became famous in the world of painting. I have very vivid memories of spending 10 days with him in his tiny house in Gujarat, in Baroda, where he was part of the Baroda school of painting, but also very different from them. Because unlike the professional academic painters, Bupan was an accountant and he came to painting accidentally. It was his eye for color, both in India and outside India, that captured the imagination of many of people who came to see his paintings. Howard Hodgkin, the great English painter, also a master of color, first saw Bhupan Kakkar's work at the Biennale in Delhi, I think in the late 70s or early 80s, and thought that this was the finest work he'd seen and helped and encouraged him to become a full-time painter. His color, his use of color, his imagination, his depiction of Indian faces of the Indian poor, people who worked in, uh, with little stalls selling tea, street vendors, uh, religious people, people in villages, these are the people Bhupin uh, uh, painted. In the 1980s, for the first time, Bhupin Kakkar's paintings were exhibited at the Beauborg, the Pompidou Center in Paris, a very prestigious uh, uh, site, and he was very excited about it. And he wrote and asked whether I would film it, and we decided we would send a team, and we did, and filmed Bhupin. It's the film you're about to see. Bhupen has had little formal training, but his achievement is impressive. He is the only Indian painter who has succeeded in creating a rich and original synthesis of Western art and Indian cultural traditions. This is the first time his work has been exhibited in Paris, though he is no stranger to the Tate Gallery in London and various centers in North America. Exhibitions for Bhupan are a recent affair, as he didn't start painting till he was nearly 30. Why did he make such a late start? If I had started very early, I would not have known whether I really want to paint or write or do other things. Uh, as such, uh, in the beginning, I wanted to really write, and I've written a few stories and sh a short stories. Slowly, I, th I think now I'm including my stories in painting, and I'm quite happy about it because one, what one misses in one uh, direction, one gains in another one. The celebration of Guru Jayanti is a chronicle of everyday life. It took Bhupan a year to complete the work. The message of the painting is mildly subversive. The guru comes to town, but is casually ignored. This painting, reminiscent of Bruegel, illustrates Bhupan's quality as an artist and a storyteller. It is rich in incident and figurative detail. I wanted to really show uh, a kind of life uh, which is going on. Like say, we are here getting ourselves filmed and so many other things happen outside and people really don't take notice that there is an exhibition going on or things like that. So that way, <coughs> I thought that uh, the celebration of Guru Jayanti I will include here and then people are really concerned with their own life or little small details of their life or some small things they are doing. 
And you can see that uh, a woman who is throwing uh, dirt out of her, the person who carries this gunny bag, the another person who is uh, ironing the shirt. And uh, it almost, uh, I, I did in eight months, and I felt quite happy about this painting. The celebration of Guru Jayanti illustrates the daily existence of ordinary people, a feature of much of Bhupen's work. Right from the beginning, I was interested in my environment, the place I lived, people with whom I moved, and my friends. So slowly, uh, right from the beginning, uh, they, they had taken place in my painting. Uh, I think uh, another thing is that uh, the exotic thing uh, in the painting itself doesn't interest me that much because the novelty of that wears out very easily. Uh, while our day-to-day -day things, it interests me because it is there all the time. Say, a person sitting on a chair talking or combing his hair. You see them uh, totally unaware. And I think that is what interests me, uh, how they look uh, in their own surroundings. It was at the start of the 70s that Bhupan's work first began to offend the sensibilities of the all-powerful Indian Art Academy. During 70s, uh, I started using very contemporary element and I had done a whole series of trade paintings at that time. And like watchmaker, tailor, cobbler, <clears throat> Now, these colors were very garish compared to the one I had used in my previous work. And people found that very vulgar. And I, I, I did not sell for quite a long time. A bouquet of plastic roses is Bhupan's most symbolic work his special tribute to the icon painters of old, especially the Russian Andrei Rublev. In this painting, Bhupan is mocking the acquired tastes and snobbery of the Indian middle classes. This man has all he could wish for, home, garden, job, friends. Bhupan reveals his entire life story in panels which surround the painting. But it is a closed and sterile world, empty and devoid of life, like the plastic roses he clutches in his hand. I, I don't think people liked my work at all at that time. They were very unhappy about the work. They thought that uh, even today people think that uh, the work which I had done in 68, 69, is much, was much better than the work I'm doing now. You Can't Please All, based on an old Aesopian fable, is perhaps Bhupan's answer to his critics. It's a story uh, which is very amusing to me. Uh, it's about uh, uh, son and father. They go to sell the donkey in the market. And while they are going, uh, you could see that uh, they were first both of them walking. After that, uh, some people say that, uh, look at these people, they, the donkey is there and they don't sit. So both of them, they sit on the donkey here. And then people point out that, uh, see how cruel they are, both people sitting on the donkey. So they move on and then the old man sits on the donkey and the boy walks. Again, people say that, uh, see, this old man doesn't have any pity for his uh, son who is walking. So both of them, they decide they will carry the donkey. So they carry the donkey. And while they were carrying the donkey, the, and they were crossing the bridge, the donkey jumps into the river and dies. So when the donkey dies and they were burying the donkey here, uh, the old man tells to his son, look, my son, in life, we can't please all. So this painting is based on this. and. A little detail which I had added 
uh, afterwards is this man standing on the balcony. He takes off his clothes and he says that if I'm not going to please all, I'm going to please myself. I think what one should do really is what one is and one should really take the, the advantage of what one is. Uh, I think I like that way very early Renaissance work uh, where people were just trying to find the language of painting. I think I'm not very much impressed by high Renaissance work <clears throat> but the early work where one is trying to find the language and I think that is much more relating to that, that one should not try to hide one's own weakness, but be there. It is there and one can't, if one is a painter or an artist, one can't hide anything.